Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a very awesome video as I have been given the opportunity to do a review of the Pimax 8KX. Now, before we get started, just like any other review that you've seen on my channel, um, all the thoughts, opinions, and beliefs of this product are my own and only my own. So please keep that in mind. You're going to hear both my good thoughts and my bad. As far as the video that you're seeing displayed in the background, it's more or less just showing you guys what comes with it. Um, I'm not big of an unboxer. Um, so we're going to get right into sort of how I feel about it initially. Pulling it straight out of the box, um, I actually really did enjoy its packaging. My favorite part was actually in the previous segment there, that cable loom that comes with it. Um, it's very nice to be able to have that, and then that has a sleeve that it goes into as well. So wrapping up the cable is very, very simple with this, which is nice when you're talking about how long these things are and the fact that there's three cables. You have one display port and two USB-Cs, uh, or USB 3.0s, excuse me, not USB-Cs. Um, the overall build of the product is very, very nice and very, very sturdy. My only concerning points initially were those uh, cables you can see coming off the speakers there, the headphones. Um, I was worried they were going to rub on my head and be uncomfortable, but once I put the headset on, I couldn't even tell they were there. So that was not a concern at all after wearing it. Um, the face mask is very, very nice. The trick is that you have to put your face into the mask first and then pull the headrest, which I found uh, to be a little bit weird, all the way down to the very back of your skull. You want to pull that back piece down as low as it can go, almost to where the top of your neck meets the base of your skull, and then tighten it up from there and then tighten the head strap. Um, if you don't do that, you will find that the forward weight of this headset is quite incredible. So it's very, very critical if you're looking to get this, that you make sure that's something you're going to be comfortable with. It is an adjustment, um, but as you can see there, it's very simple. You just pull the top strap loose, pull that uh, headband down uh, below your uh, skull, and then tighten the knob in the back. Um, the, like I said, the face mask is very comfortable. I think my only complaint about the face mask would be that as far as I can tell at this moment, the nose guard or nose, sh nose shield, I should say, uh, is not removable. I'm one of those people who actually likes to be able to see the keyboard underneath my nose. Um, just in case, you know, you're trying to fiddle with a key or something like that, but it's not a deal breaker. Um, if anything, it absolutely does enhance the immersion of it, especially given the 200 degree field of view from diagonal points. Um, I believe it's 170 degrees horizontal in the large field of view setting in the, using the Pi tool, which we'll take a look at a little bit later here. Um, it is very, very comfortable. I think my only other complaint would be, and I don't know a headset that doesn't suffer from this, but I'm going to mention anyway, uh, is the cable. The cable definitely pulls. It catches on your back. It catches on your clothes, uh, catches on the chair. And then you find yourself, you can, you can feel that weight of the cable pulling your head back. So that can cause some discomfort after a while. Um, so if you have an ability to have the, the cable resting in a vertical position, like a, you know, through your chair or something like that, that would definitely be ideal for this particular product in my opinion. Um, but now let's get into some of the specs of this beautiful headset. Now getting into the specs again, it does come with native 4k resolution per eye. So a total of 8k resolution with a 200 degree field of view that is from diagonal corner to corner and 170 degrees horizontal field of view. Here we have a display of what that would look like, and I can tell you from first-hand experience using the Pimax 5K Plus and now the 8KX, it is a major immersion. So as we were talking earlier, from the Pi tool, you have two different options. We have native, which is going to run the 8K resolution, so genuine rendering of 4K resolution per eye at anywhere between 75 and 90 hertz. And then you have the upscaling, which renders at 2K per eye and then upscales up to 8K and gives you a higher refresh rate. Now, which one you use is going to determine on what you're doing. High speed games such as flight simulation, air combat simulation, racing simulation, anything that's moving very, very quickly, you're obviously going to want that higher refresh rate. That's where you're going to get that flawless and seamless motion coming from the VR headset. However, if you're playing something where you're looking for more of the fidelity in the graphics and less so in the motion, that's where the native resolution is really going to come into play. Now, I will say this was a mistake I made when I first attempted as I was trying native uh, resolution while using DCS World and flying low level, skimming the treetops kind of thing. And I was having a very hard time when I switched to the upscaling, things got much better. 
Now, I'm always very hesitant to actually display VR footage as I always feel like you're not truly getting the full effect of what I'm seeing in the headset. However, in this particular instance, I found that the smoothness that it was recorded in the VR recording here was actually pretty identical to what I was actually getting in the uh, headset itself. Um, very little stuttering, very little uh, any kind of indication of frame loss or anything like that. Now, I did not pull the frame rate up, and I didn't do that on purpose. Um, on my final review, I will be doing a frames per second video, and the reason why I'm waiting until the final review is because I want to make sure I have it tweaked and dialed in correctly uh, before I go boasting frame rates. Um, with that in mind, obviously you guys are going to be wondering about hardware. Hardware specifications are listed down in the description below, but real quickly, I am running an AMD Ryzen 9 3900XT 32GB DDR4 PC3200. I am running the DCS World and the Pimax software off a Gen 4 PCIe NVMe.2 hard drive, as well as obviously using the RTX 2080 Ti. So if you are running a 30 series card, you're even going as long as you're running the higher 30 series cards, 30, 80, I would say, and above, you're going to have even better performance than I did. And I will say that uh, I did notice some weird jumping and bouncing. And these, again, these are things that I am going to have to look at, but it was nothing that I would call game breaking or had any impact on the immersion itself. I enjoyed my simulation play with the Pimax 8K and was actually quite blown away by it. Um, I did not expect my PC to operate as nearly as nicely as it did, um, given the fact that in the past I've had some struggles with the Pimax 5K+. Plus. Uh, but this uh, Gen 2 VR seems to really be uh, turning the tables, if you will, uh, for VR performance while providing that wild, wide field of view. Um, I will say that that is probably the biggest boasting point, in my opinion, for Pimax headsets in general is that field of view. With the wider field of view, you know, people don't, I don't think, realize how advantageous it is to have that. What the wider field of view does is gives you more peripheral vision. The more peripheral vision you have, the more sense of motion you get. Um, so that's why I said, you know, during racing simulations or here in flight simulations, especially down at low terrain, um, you're really going to get that sense that you're, that you're cooking tail across the, the, the land, right? Um, again, that comes from your peripheral vision and the Pimax series headsets definitely provide that peripheral vision and make it quite an awesome experience. Um, I will say that I do feel that I have more dialing in to do with the Pimax uh, 8KX, but thus far I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, I'm still working on dialing in the settings. They're cranked fairly high right now, and I'm, uh, again, really impressed. The visual uh, fidelity of the Pimax 8KX has been nothing to complain about, to say the least. Um, you'll see me, I'm intentionally pushing the aircraft to its limits. I'm rolling, I'm dipping, I'm flipping over. I'm doing everything I can to try to intentionally generate a stutter. At the end of this, I actually crashed the aircraft on purpose um, to intentionally see if it would... Uh cause a tear or a stutter or a frame rate loss or something that was very noticeable. Um, that was something that I've seen a lot in the past when you get like a sudden explosion or a, a very rapid change in scenery. You know, you'll get those screen tears, you'll get the, the stuttering and the lagging and things like that. And I didn't get anything. Um, everything that you're seeing on the screen here was real, honestly what I was seeing in the headset. I was, uh, I was <laughs> very pleasantly surprised. I was expecting very, uh, very minimal performance with this um, because it was the true 8K resolution um, and even in the upscale, it's still upscaling to 8K. Um, and, uh, you know, given my 2080 Ti, I don't have the current series graphics cards. I know that that's what a lot of the systems are being built around now is the 30 series. And uh, it really did change the game. Um, I, was, I was very pleasantly surprised with this particular headset. Um, I think the hardest part that's going to be dialing it in is, and this is for any of the headsets, um, anytime you have to use Steam VR and the Pi tool, and for example, in this case, DCS, you know, we have three different, three different uh, systems all with their own graphic settings. You know, the Pi tool has its own settings and, and things that need to be tweaked and adjusted. Then you have Steam VR that needs to be tweaked and adjusted. Then you have DCS that needs to be tweaked and adjusted. So getting all three of them in together and to work uh, succinctly typically is quite a pain in the rear. Um, but uh, for a real quick, I probably spent a whopping 10, maybe 15 minutes dialing a few things back here and there, adjusting XYZ. Um, and I'm, again, I'm not sharing those settings in this video on purpose. 
uh, simply because I haven't dialed it in. When I really fine tune it and get you know get those numbers down, that's when I'll go into frame rate and things like that and, and actually display the settings. But I do want to give you guys the heads up again. You know, I mentioned my computer specs earlier; they're down in the description. So if you have something similar and you're looking for an upgrade, you know, I would at the moment I would have no problem giving uh, the AKX my personal endorsement. Anyway, um, it's been a very nice headset thus far. I think my biggest um, takeaways from this as far as what to expect moving forward is it's still a bit forward heavy even with the headset uh, adjusted correctly but I think that's something that you know you just get used to over time you know your neck muscles will adjust just like anything else you know, so I'm not too concerned about that um, but uh, all in all like I've been really really pleased with this thing um, the um, messing with the three different settings, the three different areas of settings, that's going to be another thing that I'm not particularly looking forward to, but it's the nature of the, of the beast, right, when it comes to VR. I can't think of a single headset that doesn't require um, all those same steps, you know, in order to work. Um, with maybe the exception of Oculus. So, you know, I know, for example, I think you can run DCS World directly from Oculus without the use of Steam VR or any other third-party sources. Um, but even Microsoft, you know, Flight Simulator, for example, you would need your whatever your, for example, Oculus software and then uh, Windows Mixed Reality if memory serves right. Same thing with the Pimax. Pimax, we need, again, the Steam VR Pi tool and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So it's pretty common. That's not That's not too unheard of. So anyway. With that, guys, I'm going to come out of here with a bang, and I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys have found this useful, and uh, stay tuned for my final thoughts in a couple of weeks. Have a great week, guys. I'll talk to you soon.